Hello, Jason Dragon here to talk about Ethereum mining. Today we're going to talk about should you buy Ethereum or mine for it. As the leader of the Ethereum mining channel here on Facebook, it is one of the most popular questions. It comes out almost every single day, whether as a main post or as a comment on a post. People are always thinking, you know, let's just buy the Ethereum itself and not mine for it. It is a lot easier, you know, but so for some people, they mine simply because it's a lot of fun. So let me talk about that topic right now. I've personally had to answer this topic many, many times, and it's something that a lot of people get confused on because the math is actually kind of difficult, and it needs a little bit of thinking about to make it work. So first off, the most important concept is difficulty of Ethereum. So, as you can tell, this is a chart for the last about 30 days, October 18th to November 13th. Now, during this time, the difficulty has fairly stayed about the same. In fact, the beginning point and the ending point are almost identical. <laughs> and it's gone up and down, averaging right around 1,450 terahashes. Now, if you look at before that, the price was way higher. I mean, the difficulty was way higher. Now, why is this? This was because of the Ice Age. So if you see right here, it's pretty obvious that these increases came at incremental parts. Here's an increase. Here's an increase. Here's an increase. And this was because of the difficulty that was programmed into the difficulty bomb that was programmed into Ethereum on day one. Well, they did a hard fork, and that bomb has now been delayed for about 20 more months from now. So I'm going to assume, and we're going to go here for my list of assumptions, that we're going to be mining for 20 months. And at the end of 20 months, this bomb will happen again, and it will make mining significantly less profitable, and therefore all the math that I'm going to be showing you today will no longer be correct. <clears throat> but if you look and you go back to before the mining started, I mean before the difficulty started, you actually can tell that the actual true difficulty of Ethereum from back here to where it is right now is basically the same. Since the beginning of July, we have not seen an increase in, in the difficulty of Ethereum. And for me, that's for a lot of different reasons. One of the main reasons is people come in, they mine for Ethereum, and then they might go and mine something else. There is the whole what to mine website right here, which tells you which one to mine. And for a whole year, Ethereum was the number one, one, the number one cryptocurrency on the list. But now it's all the way down here, about number 10 it looks like, with some currencies such as Feathercoin right now being at 200% the money that you can make from mining Ethereum. I called, and then if you have something called NiceHash. NiceHash is a program that lets you run on your computer and it smartly figures out which cryptocurrency is the absolute easiest to mine right now and it switches you into that currency. I call that switch mining. And I think it's something that is definitely a good idea. Mining for the best currency causes it to lock in the price of difficulty versus the actual price of Ethereum. If the price of Ethereum goes up by 10%, then the amount of money you're going to make mining Ethereum goes up by 10% for a little while. And then people start switching and mining Ethereum, which pushes the difficulty up and puts you right back to the same equilibrium price. So for that is our first assumption. The mining price changes result in approximately proportional changes to the mining difficulty. If the price goes up by 20%, the difficulty will go down by 20% and vice versa. So if we're seeing mining at $300 and all of a sudden now the price of Ethereum drops down to $200, we should see a significant decrease in the amount of money, in the amount of difficulty for Ethereum, almost directly proportional because of all of the other currencies 
that people can instantly and easily switch into. This wasn't always the case. Earlier this year, it was quite difficult to switch currencies, and people didn't really understand how to do that as much as they do now with things like NiceHash being much more perfected. So we're now we're going to go to our second assumption. Our second assumption is one giga hash of mining results in five Ethereum production if we have a price of 310. So as I said before, everything's proportional. So that creates our ratio of how much money we should expect as the price goes up. We also put in here that mining hardware will depreciate in value by 15% right off the get-go in the first month, and then about 2% per month after that. I've been doing this for a long time, and that seems to be a right around the right um, depreciation level. So um, a machine that's you'll see right here on my bottom assumptions, we have value of hardware. And let's say we buy an entire $20,000 worth of mining power, which today will get you about one giga hash. That's at a $20 per mega hash price point. We'll talk about that more in a second. So on day one, your machines are probably worth about 17000 And as we go month by month by month, as you can see right here in the very bottom of the screen, the price will go down, down, down. And at the end of 20 months, we're estimating a price of approximately $11,581 is going to be the value of all your mining machines at the end of that. And for GigaHash, you're talking 72 1050 Ti cards. That's the absolute least expensive way that I've calculated how to get to one GigaHash of performance. <coughs> 72 cards, if you click over here, we put 72 1050s, comes to 1000 MegaHash, which is a GigaHash. And it just so happens that that's the exact way I build it. Six cards a machine, 12 machines. That gets you one giga hash. And at the end of 20 months, 72 cards should be worth probably even more than 11,581. Of course, you're going to have motherboards, processors, the racks, you're going to have RAM, all that. So 11,581 is probably actually a low number for what I believe the fair market value of these cards will be in 20 months. So. Now let's continue to the next assumption. Uh, we're mining these systems. We're basically costing $1,600 to build, and you get 80 mega hash. Now the systems we build get a little bit more than 80 mega hash. Let me let me show you, show you some pictures of the system that we're building. We are using a bamboo shoe rack. Actually, um, it's actually a really nice shoe rack. We've been using it for a few of our rigs. Uh, we actually drill holes in the bottom. And we have long screws. We can hold the hard drive right there. Uh, we kind of do the same thing with the motherboard, so gravity doesn't really matter. The power supply is held on with a, just a really long um, metal tie that is insulated, so it doesn't get power and it doesn't get grounded. Next, we're going to show you, you know, we use some power adapters. That's what the motherboard we are using for these. It is pretty much the least expensive motherboard that we've found. Uh, to mine on for a six board, a six card rig, the Biostar TB250 dash BTC. And please do me a favor. I need to build like 20 more of these in the next week. So don't go online and buy all these up. I, I really need to still buy some more motherboards. <laughs> so yeah, leave me some, please. <laughs> so next, we're using the 1050 Ti's. You'll see right here an EVGA 750 watt power supply. I do use a hard drive. I can acquire hard drives um, a lot cheaper than SSDs. There is, in my mind, no reason to use an SSD in a mining machine. It literally only increases your boot time by about 15, 20 seconds, and everything else that it does runs at the exact same speed. It might use three watts less electricity, but now, you know, I'm picking up used, you know, really nice hard drives that are in great condition. I've never had one fail and I'm picking them up for six bucks and you can't buy an SSD for anything less than like forty dollars. So it is one place that people are waste. I see them buying it and they're wasting a lot of money. It's only going to save you maybe a dollar a year in electricity. It's not worth it to buy an SSD. But that's a completely side note. Let me just keep going. 
So, you know, this is what one of our builds looks like. We just use uh, whatever. I pretty much try to stick with EVGA, MSI, or Gigabyte. Those are my three favorite brands when it comes to building mining rigs. Anyway, this is with only five cards. We added the sixth card later on. Um, I think when I built this card, I ran out of risers. So we just built five. So you see the sixth one can go right here. Anyway, that's a system we sell. If you're interested in doing that, you can contact Emerald Computers. Um, but that's going to be the end for the commercials. Now we're going to get to the part that you're really here to watch. So if we were to buy, if we had $20,000, that's where we're going to start with the hypothesis. Let's say we buy $20,000 of Ethereum at $310. That's going to get you 64.5 pieces of Ethereum, which that's going to be our baseline for everything that we do today. Or we can buy, with that $20,000, we could buy a dozen of those mining rigs that I just showed you. That'll give us one giga hash of mining power at $20 per mega hash. We're going to assume our cost of electricity. These machines do use a, a little bit of electricity. Um, they're a lot less electricity hungry than most other things. Here in Arizona, we have a fairly low cost of electricity. And during the summer, we pay a little bit more. And during the winter, we pay a lot less. So I've done the 12 months math. It gives us to run 12 of these machines here in Arizona, costs about $300 a month on average. During the summer, it's a little bit more. During the winter, it's a little bit less. And I'm also going to throw in, um, over the 20 month period, let's throw in a budget of $1,000 to repair stuff. We've already evaluated our hardware, so now let's go down to the first simulation. So simulation number one. Okay, and let me uh, bring this up a little bit here. <clears throat> okay. So here we go. Simulation number one. We're going to assume that in this simulation that we have stable pricing with little gains. As you see in this column, this is month number one, month number two, all the way down to month number 20. So we're going to start at a price of 310, have some fluctuations, you know, 330, 330, 310, 290. And at the end of 20 months, we're going to assume that Ethereum reaches 325. It's not a huge gain. It's something that could definitely happen. Um, I don't think this is a very likely scenario. I personally am very uh, bullish. I think we're going to see Ethereum go a lot higher than this. But let's go do the math. So at 310, we are in 5 Ethereum. And I put a little bit of variance in here and a little bit of lag. So it's kind of each month it's based upon the Ethereum that you earned, the, the, the price the previous month, just to add a little bit of variability into it. So at the end of 20 months, we're going to have 98.6 Ethereum. The value of that mined Ethereum is $32,000 which is also right here. We've had $7,000 in cost to mine that Ethereum, but if we would have just bought the Ethereum straight out and it was $325, we'd only have, we still remember 64.5 pieces, we would have $20,963 worth of Ethereum. We have our value of our hardware, which has to be added in. So we take our $32,000 minus the $7,000 in costs and then bad back in the value of the hardware, and then we subtract how much we would have re received if we had the Ethereum if we just bought it. And our gain by mining versus buying over this 20 month period is $15,664. So because we mined and we did the effort, we've made $15,664 we, we, we $15, more money than if we didn't mine. Now, we're going to go to simulation number two. This is what happens if there's a modest gain. So here in this simulation, the price of Ethereum starting at 310, it goes up, you know, spends most of the time around 400, 500, 600, 700, and then it ends the simulation at 850 bucks. Now, as you can tell, because the price of Ethereum has gone up, we're assuming that more people mine, more people buy hardware, and more people jump in. So at the end of it, we're only making 1.9 Ethereum per month, which is a lot lower. But because the price of Ethereum is a lot higher, the value of the Ethereum that we own 
is a lot higher also. So we're saying right here that we have $56,000 in Ethereum that we're going to have. We're only going to have 66.835 pieces. If we would have just bought the Ethereum and forgot about mining, we would have 64.5. So the gain isn't that huge. It's only two or three pieces. But we've also gained the hardware, $11,581 worth of hardware that we have in addition to the mining, um, to, to the Ethereum that we have. We've had $7,000 in cost yet again. So even though our difference in price between if we would have just bought the Ethereum versus if we mined it is only about two Ethereum, $1,600, at the price of 850, the actual gain from mining Ethereum is six and a half thousand because of the extra value of the hardware that we have minus the costs of the operation. So in this scenario, we're still come out ahead by mining instead of buying, but not by as much. We've limited our gains. You know, we would have, I mean, we, we've increased our gains slightly, but we haven't made as much versus the, the first simulation. So now we're going to go to simulation number three. Large gains over the next year. So price of Ethereum starts at 310 again. And let's say here we hit 850 in 12 months. And we hit 1350 here at the end of 20 months. Of course, our mining production is going to be a lot lower. Only 1.1 by the end of the time. But 1.1 1 .1 is 1300. As you can tell, in this simulation, we break even right here at month number eight. 20, you know, we actually break even before that. And I wouldn't say break even. I mean, I'm saying the Ethereum that we have has paid for all the computers and we still have the computers. So we're still up, not only by, we're up by $1,000 here, but we're also up to $14,000 over here. So we're actually $15,000 ahead. If you want to see where we break even, what you really need to do is you need to add the value of the hardware plus the value of the cryptocurrency. So here, technically, we break even. We've returned our investment on month two. And that's why the whole return on investment, the way that people use it is wrong. You don't you count. You have to count your underlying asset also. So we've by the end of month two, we've earned enough by mining Ethereum that we've covered our cost of the depreciation of the underlying mining rigs. And that's pretty much true on every single month that we have here. 3,200, well, you know, even if we just jump into month three, 4,500 plus 16,000. So we're at 21,000. By the end of month three, you have $21,000 in assets. You're already ahead by mining. And that's with a price of 305, which if you would have just bought the currency, you'd actually be losing right now versus being ahead by a thousand dollars. That just shows the power of mining. Anyway, let's go back to simulation number three. You've returned all of your cash by month eight, and you still have fifteen thousand dollars of computer hardware. So it's a really good investment. But is it as good as buying the Ethereum itself? And in simulation number three, with a large gain, the answer is actually no, it's not. It's better to buy the Ethereum itself because now you, though you've made $75,000 mining your Ethereum, you still have the $11,500 worth of mining computers and not only a cost of $7,000, so you're up by a whole heck of a lot. You would have made $8,000 more, actually, if you would have just bought Ethereum and done nothing with it. Just bought it and held it in the account. Now, let me bring a, a little topic up. If you're anything like me, it's really hard sometimes when you see all these other coins going on or other ICOs or other things going on to keep your Ethereum and just let it sit there. You know, Bitcoin Cash, to me right now, looks really good. It's up, you know, four times what it was a week and a half ago. I'm kind of tempted to put some of my Ethereum into that. And by having your Ethereum just sit on the sidelines, you might be tempted. And then you have trading losses and gains, which we're not going to go into on this video. And we don't really know exactly how that's going to happen. So 
to me, I like mining because it's money in the bank. It's money every single month that's going into my account. My, my Ethereum account, obviously. So, by mining Ethereum in a simulation where we see large gains, we're actually going to be at a loss versus just buying the Ethereum on day one, 64.5 pieces, and let it sit. So the real question and everything is, what do you think the price of Ethereum is going to be 20 months from now? Do you think 325 850 maybe? Maybe 1350 The break-even point, we calculated it earlier, is at about $1,100. If it's at $1,100, it... It's, uh, I say about 1100 It's between 1000 and 1100 It de depends on what the curve is here. Does the price go up steadily to get to $1,100? Or does the price shoot up and then maintain to get to $1,100? That determines what price, if you're going to make money or, or on which investment avenue. Sorry my voice is a little bit rough today. I've been a little under the weather. So, so let me show you. The doom scenario. What happens if something horrible happens to Ethereum? What happens if, you know, maybe some, maybe the EU or maybe the United States decides to ban it? Or what happens if there's some major hack and a quarter of all the Ethereum gets frozen somehow um, and they have to do a couple of multiple hard forks? Or, you know, what happens if something really bad happens? Well, in this scenario, you still have the underlying asset. So let's say the price of Ethereum starts again, yep, month one, $310. But we're going to have these disasters. Here it goes from 250 to 180 you know? And then, you know, maybe it tries to rebound a little bit, hits 80 bucks, and then it starts going up. And let's say it ends at 100 bucks. Just to be fair, we'll give Ethereum $100 at the end of uh, the 20 months. So, because you earned a lot more Ethereum during these down times, because, as I said before, the people are going to go mine, and they're going to shift mine and go mine something else. They're going to switch mine. So what does that mean? The value of the Ethereum that you've earned all the way here to the end is still $22,635. Then again, we'll go through the cost of running it and the value of the hardware, $11,581. So, but if you would have just bought the Ethereum, held on, those 64.5 pieces are now worth only $6,450. You've lost two-thirds of your money. So by mining for the Ethereum, not only do we have $22,000 in mined Ethereum, we have $11,000 in hardware, albeit $7,000 of cost to mine during that time. If we subtract how much you would have bought from the Ethereum, you're actually $20,000 ahead by mining for Ethereum versus buying it. With a, with a huge loss, we're talking losing two-thirds of the value of Ethereum, you're still making a pretty sizable profit, a pretty good return, a return that any real estate investor would be really happy to have on their real estate property. You know, but people who invest in the bond market or even the stock market, you know, to have, which this is about a $26,000, or $27,000 on a $20,000 investment at the end of 20 months, that's still a 35% return at the end of 30 months or 20 months. So that's about 20% a year. Most investors out there, they would love a 20% return on investment. And that's what we're doing with a, a huge loss in the value of Ethereum. So in this case, this, this simulation number four, this is the number one case on why you should mine instead of just buy Ethereum. Is if the price goes down, way down, mining is still a lot better and a lot more profitable. So next, I'm going to show you the number one case on why you should buy and you shouldn't mine. And that's my simulation number five, calling it Moon. So let's say Ethereum goes crazy all the way. You know, quickly gains $1,000 here on month six, and then quickly goes to $2,000 at the end of 20 months. This could likely happen. You know, in this scenario, you're making the most money on your mined Ethereum. At the end of it, you're making very little Ethereum, 
Now I did adjust the formula slightly here to because every single time the price goes up quickly, the difficulty does becomes out of sync simply because people can't build rigs fast enough to fill in that 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 opportunity. So the amount of, of actual money you make mining goes up. It's great. Um, but the amount of Ethereum you make does go down. So in this scenario, you're only going to make a little less than 40 pieces of Ethereum at the end of 20 months. That's still going to be worth the highest amount of anything that we've done so far, simply because each piece is now worth $2,000. That's going to be $79,000. And then we have our four and a half thousand dollars that we have because of our of rigs being worth more more valuable than our costs were. But if you would have just bought the Ethereum, you'd have $129,000. That's $45,000 that you lost because you decided to mine instead of just holding Ethereum. So the question is, where do you think Ethereum is going to go? Higher prices are better for investors. Modest gains or below are better for miners. Mining reduces your risk of losses, but also reduces your gains when the price goes way up. So what I'm doing right now with my personal friends and the people I'm advising is I'm telling them to do a little bit of both. 30% right now buying Ethereum and put the rest in mining. Of course, find your own mix. You know, if you really are adamant that you think it's going to go way up, then put a little bit more heavy into the side of buying the cryptocurrency. If you think, you know, you don't really know, you know, even if you think it's going to go to $850 in 20 months, it's still better at $850 to mine. So what you do is you put more money in mining. I personally, you know, I have over, I have, let me show you right here. I have 30 mining machines. Ah, where's it at? So I have 30 mining machines right now. And, you know, here are my bamboo ones, the ones I showed you on the screen a little while ago. Uh, they're doing ones doing 85, ones doing 88. Uh, this one, I reset the overclock and I haven't had time to go fix it. So it's only doing 74. So, you know, they get on average about 80. That's what I say, 80 plus. Um, but, you know, 30 mining machines running a giga hash. I have a lot of machines that are just actually computers that only mine one. So find your own mix. Figure out how much you want to spend in mining and how much you want to spend in buying cryptocurrencies. Of course, I recommend nobody spends more money than you intend that you could actually reasonably lose. You know, you don't want to take $100,000 when you don't have money to put food on the table and buy Ethereum. <laughs> That's not something I would do. But it is here in the United States at least. It's winter right now, or winter's coming. It's technically fall, it's still November. But that $300 that you're spending on the electricity for the Ethereum, all of that electricity could be used to help heat your house. If you run a space heater that has, say, 2,000 watts of electricity, or 1,500 watts of space heater, you know, but you have 1,500 watts of mining machines, that's going to generate the same amount of heat as a 1,500 watt space heater, but that space heater doesn't do anything. It just burns the electricity and makes heat out of it. The mining machine makes you money and makes heat out of it. So, you know, for me, if you're spending electricity to heat your home, and you're going to put these mining rigs in your home, then if you think about it, the electricity is actually free. It doesn't really cost you anything during the winter, during the time of the year when you're heating your home. You know, I know people who, here in Arizona, we don't need to heat our home. I mean, it's November 13th today, and my air conditioner was on for over an hour. It was 87 degrees here in Arizona today. So we don't have that luxury here in Arizona. There are about three months out of the year where we actually kind of do use a heater. We personally just have little space heaters. I haven't used the central air in this house in about two years. I mean the central heating, but that's on a side measure. 
another little, I mean, if you, um, if I've answered your question, great, you could turn the video off. I am going to talk about one or two other things real quick, if you have a few more minutes. So what I want to talk about right now is cloud mining. Um, 20, as I said before, if you look at the assumptions, $20 per mega hash is what you can own a quality mining machine for. A mining machine that's going to have a residual value at the end of 12 months of $13,000. So in reality, it's only costing you, let's say, with three and a half thousand dollars, four and a half, four thousand dollars of, of energy. So we're saying that mining machine only costs you $10,000 to run for the first year. But if you look at these, these contracts here, you know, you can't, these, these prices are $30 a mega hash for a 24 month contract. At the end of 24 months, you get nothing. So this is why I feel that cloud mining is completely waste of money. I mean, you, you, they have costs, you know, you, you have to lose money for their fees, you have to lose money for the actual cost that you're paying them up front. So $33 a week, you're not going to get your money back for 575 days. Now, yet again, if the difficulty goes way up, you might never get your money back. And guess what? If you cloud mine, you don't have hardware to sell at the end. So at the end of it, should you buy Ethereum or mine for it? Well, when I say mine, I definitely don't mean cloud mining. Cloud mining is not even half. Not even one quarter, really, is profitable as real mining. If if you you have this question to me, should you buy Ethereum or mine for it? I would say 100% of the time, if your definition of mining is cloud mining, I would say 100% of the time, don't mine for it. You should buy it. If you want to, if your definition of mining is building a rig, having some fun, you know, putting it at your home, then yes, I would do that. It's, it's incredible how expensive cloud mining is. I mean, we're talking $2,800 here for 100 mega hash, and that's the least expensive bulk price when you're buying for a 24-month contract. So what does that mean? I could buy a machine for 20, you know, if you do the, the math, we're talking $28 to buy one mega hash, but at the end of 24 months, you get nothing left over. When you could buy a mining rig from somebody like me for $20 a mega hash and have a nice computer you get to use during the interim and have a nice and have something nice built left over. Um, that's for our six card rig. If you were buying our, du our dual card rig, which is actually an actual computer, um, we've sold a lot of those to businesses and they actually have their employees using those computers. You're basically paying a little bit more to actually get a really nice computer to go with your mining ability. That costs a little bit more, maybe about $25 per mega hash. Still cheaper than the contract. And you get a nice computer that somebody can use. And you have a nice gaming computer at the end of it that has a pretty good resale value. Um, I was watching this. I just saw this one here. This one here has an actual fee to actually use your contract. The fee is actually insanely high. It's a dollar a day, but that means you actually lose. You pay you pay them $208 to get this contract, and then you lose $15 a month to keep the contract. Well, how is that good? You have you owe them money forever. They'll never so you pay them $208 so they could take $186 from you over the next year. That does not make sense. But at least they do it for life. You can lose money for life. Isn't that great? So here's a this, this one I find really hilarious. $409 for a one-month contract. It won't pay back. Obviously, right here, it doesn't pay back either. None of these cloud mining ones pay back in the term of the contract. You know, $35 for one per mega hash for a 12-month contract from whatever company that is. Anyway, <laughs> it's just horrible. As I said before, 12 months, let's pay $35 for something you could build yourself for 20, but at the end of 12 months, you get nothing back. And the other big little undisclosed scam of these cloud miners, 
is the fact that if you don't make if you buy one of these really small contracts, well, it only generates a few pennies a day. Well, a lot of these in the fine print, they won't even pay you until you generate fifty dollars. So let's say six hundred and sixteen days is how long it takes to generate you to get your thirty dollars back. Well, you haven't made fifty dollars yet. And then, by the time you make fifty dollars, your twenty-four months has passed. So guess what? They just keep all the money. You get nothing. <laughs> anyway, please don't cloud mine, and don't tell people to cloud mine. This is why I don't do it. It's just insane. Sorry for going so far off topic. That's why I said earlier you can stop the video earlier. So, in addition to doing this, you can make a little bit more money by dual mining, which is where you pick two currencies at the same time. So for example, Ethereum and let's pick another one. Let's say Ethereum and I don't know, Monero. I don't think Monero, you, can, you can't you can really dual mine on Monero. Maybe IOTA. So what you could do is you can mine on Ethereum and mining a different coin uses a slightly different algorithm. So by mining Ethereum you can mine another coin simultaneously and it'll use two different parts of your graphics card. It will create more heat, it will use a little bit more electricity, but it can generate a lot more money. So if you're interested in that, that's a nice little bonus. Also, if you're interested in just mining on the switch mining, where you pick and you mine whatever the nicest currency is at the moment, we have nice hash, which allows you, as you said back here, know what to mine. Ah, so you take your machine, and instead of making whatever you're making on Ethereum, hundred percent, you it'll automatically mine something else. Maybe it's mining Crypto Knight, which is the Electrium, which I don't know if that's a real or legit one or not, but um, you know it's making more money, hundred and forty-one percent what Ethereum would be making. So switch mining is another way to increase your profits. And if we look back here at our doom scenario, if something like this happens, it's pretty likely that switch mining could save you. And instead of just making $22,000, you might be at $30,000, $35,000 because you're able to switch to another currency that didn't take a dive like this. Anyway, that's it. If you have more questions about anything, Please hit me up on the uh, Theory of Mining Facebook forum. That would be awesome, the Facebook page. Um, just since we've been having this nice conversation, Ethereum has gone up $2. It was $310 at the beginning, and now it's $312. Um, that happens all the time. By tomorrow, it'll probably be $310. Could be $320. We don't know. It goes up and down quite a lot. But thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. Make sure you add yourself to our Theory of Mining group. Um, we have over 20,000 people who are coming on here. We have 388 people just since this morning who want to join. Um, there's a lot of hype in Ethereum. A lot, it's a lot of good things going on. And if you're going to be a miner, there's some awesome stuff. Uh, we have a lot of people asking about, like, you know, basic questions like what adapter should we use for this? You know, what motherboard is a great motherboard? You know, we, people ask for help and they get really good answers right away. You get different opinions. You get cool little videos. Like here's a big uh, mining ring. I believe this one's in uh, Russia. So you get a lot of different ideas, different ways to make your mining rigs better. Here's a guy just putting wood boxes in his little room. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> anyway, I kind of like it. it. Makes me smile. So um, you get ideas of different hardware you can use, different ways just to make your system more efficient. So if you want to have some of the best answers here and even some people even want to sell their machines so on a little side note as I said before you could buy a brand new rig twenty dollars per mega hash so if someone wants to sell you a used rig don't pay more than twenty dollars per mega hash um, as I said before you get a fifteen percent depreciation so to me you know somewhere around seventeen dollars per mega hash is a good price to pay for a used rig if it's a little bit older, like a 280, like a 380 or a 290 or a 390 AMD type video card, 
those use a lot more electricity. I would pay a little bit less on that because it uses less more electricity. I might only give 13, 12, somewhere around there dollars per mega hash. So if you can find a rig, any rig, and get it in your possession and pay less than $12 per mega hash, to me that's a good deal. Go out, buy that rig. If you see a rig that's just an actual rig that just sits there and just mines, and it's more than $20 per mega hash, then that's expensive for uh, somebody else building it. If you're building your own rig, of course, these numbers would be even lower. Um, you could buy the parts, you could build your own rig. You know, these rigs don't necessarily cost me. Obviously, $20 per mega hash, that's after I pay my employees, I pay my rent, I pay my, my bills. I can sell it for $20 per mega hash. Of course, my cost is a little bit lower because I have to make some profit, and that's I'm fine with people making profit because that's how the world works. Capitalism is good. So that's how everything we're doing is based on. So if you're going to build your own rig, you know, $15, $17 per mega hash is a good price to build your own rig. If you're building your own rig out of parts and you're doing all this effort and you're paying more than $17 per mega hash, you're probably doing something wrong and you want to reevaluate what it is. If you're buying, so hopefully that helps you with your, some of your buying decisions. If you decide that you want to mine, you know, do the math, figure out how much it's going to be. But I see people mining with highly inefficient cards. You know, like, for example, the 1080 is a pretty expensive card, and it doesn't mine that much. I mean, literally, three 1050s cost significantly less than a 1080, but yet three 1050s only cost, I mean, three 1050s can mine more than a 1080 can mine. Of course, you're going to have more costs on your motherboard and all that, but... You know, the secret to the 1050s is the power supply. You know, I don't have to go, like, I can put a six-card rig and go with a $50 power supply. You don't need to be spending a huge percentage of your budget on a high-end power supply when you're building a 1050 rig. Again, don't go out and buy all the 1050s. I need to buy about 80 of them. So don't buy them up, please. Anyway... I'm just joking. You can go buy them up. I'm sure someone else will make some more stuff. Um, that being said, you know, let's look at AMD. So, you know, you want to look at the AMD stock price for the last year? You know, let's say a five-year stock price. Well, I'm sure Ethereum had a lot to do with this price. You know, you can also watch the NVIDIA stock price. You know, one year. It's been going up five years. So here's where mining started. Ethereum, I mean, NVIDIA, 10, you know, $10 just in the last day. It's doing really good. It's hit a record high. You know, a good chunk of this, it's miners. And, you know, gamers, gamers are nice, but miners are making money for these companies. I wish they would see that and support the uh, miners a little bit more. Anyway, I like NVIDIA, building 1050s. Cool. All right, well, you have an awesome day. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, just like everybody else asked you to do. I'll have another video here probably in about a week or two. The next video I'm working on right now is going to be all about the switch mining, how to install nice hatch and do that. I'm also working on a couple of videos from some other people, uh, basically Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold. One of the things that is interesting, let me go bring this up real quick. If you look at the difficulty chart for Ethereum, Bitcoin Gold was just became mineable today. I'm talking earlier today. So you see right here, 1,540. This right here, this time, is when Bitcoin Gold became mineable. And look at the difficulty of Ethereum. It's gone down almost 8% since Bitcoin Gold came online. And during that same time, the price of, Bit of, of Ethereum has gone up. So my ratio won't always be correct because new currencies 
do screw up it do screw it up it makes everybody make a little bit more money so that makes mining even more profitable than what we originally discussed but I'm sure more people will build mining machines in fact I just sold what I how many did I sell today I've sold 14 mining machines this weekend uh, well, I've, I haven't sold them yet I've taken orders for them it's gonna take me a week or so to build them. anyway have an awesome day like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.